Good morning and welcome to Morning Scoop for Thursday, March 10th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The spring game is in 37 days, the Notre Dame game in 177 days, the game against Michigan in 261 days. The start of spring football at Ohio State also means the start of the busy season for spring visits, as some of the best prospects in the nation in the classes of 2023 and 2024 start to head to Columbus to see what the Buckeyes have to offer. Alex Gleitman has been tracking those visits for us in his ADEC column and joins me this morning to share some updates on how the early visits have gone. Alex, thanks for being here. Yeah, of course. Great uh, great time of year. Football's back. Recruiting is open. Dead period's ended. And uh, got a lot to talk about on Buckeye Scoop. Yeah, I love I love the, uh, you know, when the offseason isn't really the offseason. Ohio State football somehow just is sort of a 12-month-a-year sport one way or another. So this is... Uh, Another busy season, which will always will always take a busy season for Ohio State football. Let's start with a guy that we talked about the last time we talked, Bryson Rogers. He's a wide receiver for 2023. Uh, for people who don't remember, he's the guy who you mentioned that you had learned that he had ties to the state of Ohio that most people didn't know about. How did his visit go when he was in Columbus? Yeah, I, it went outstanding. I mean, his his mom's originally from Ohio. His whole family's from Ohio. They're, they're Buckeye fans. Uh, a bunch of them were, I believe, on the visit with him. Um, you know, this is the offer he wanted for a long time. He got it. Uh, first visit, uh, smashing success. Um, you know, I, I do think he's going to take official visits. It seems like that's his plan, but I'd be pretty surprised if he's not a Buckeye by the time it's the, you know, he makes his commitment. I, I would probably guess maybe toward the end of June or, or early July, somewhere in that time frame. All right. Next up is a guy that I talked about with Mark Giffler about after the best of the Midwest camp a couple of weeks ago. His name is Arvell Reese. He's a 2023 linebacker. You may remember us discussing him. And it sounds like some things have changed with him and the Buckeyes since uh, Mark and I talked a week or two back. Yeah. I mean, I, I put a story on BuckeyeScoop.com. Definitely check it out. It's on the front page and put some scoop inside my uh, A-deck extra as well. Arvell got offered on the visit. Um, he, he was surprised. Uh, he he wasn't going to hold it against Ohio State. He just didn't think it was going to come this early. Uh, he thought maybe spring game, maybe if he had to camp in the summer. But Ohio State liked him enough. They extended the offer, and you know here we are. USC offered last night too. They they didn't want to be late to the party. Um, but quite frankly, despite Arvell playing it pretty Switzerland right now, I, I'd be pretty surprised if he's not the next Glenville Tar Blooder uh, to end up wearing the scarlet and gray. Um, you know, great pipeline from that school to Ohio State historically. And uh, it's it's really hard for kids to say no to Ohio State uh, out of Glenville. Yeah, anytime you offer an in-state kid that early, you, you got to feel decent about Ohio State's chances. And that's probably doubly true with a uh, with a kid from the uh, Ted Ginn, the Ted Ginn factory. So uh, next up, another linebacker. He is uh, his name is Tackett Curtis. He is definitely not from a pipeline school from Ohio State. For Ohio State, he is a top 100 linebacker from Louisiana. Now that's a state where the Buckeyes have not pulled a scholarship player since Nader Abdallah way back in the Jim Tressel era. So it sounds like, despite all that history, there may be some reason for optimism with uh, Tackett Curtis after his visit as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I wrote about Tackett um, probably over the last month, and I said. Recently, it's just a couple of weeks ago that I thought it was very realistic that he could leave the state of Louisiana, leave the region. Um, you know, some of the visits he's making are well outside the region. Um, you just talk to him. He's a kid who's, I think, genuinely interested in Ohio State. Jim Knowles made him a priority from day one. He got the job. He might have been his first stop or one of his first stops out on the road um, and just kind of told him, you are the perfect fit. For my defense, you are the perfect player to to star in this defense, and you know they liked what they were hearing from Coach Knowles enough. Obviously, Ohio State a big program. Him and his dad, who's his high school coach, um, they came up, had a great visit. I know red carpet was rolled out for them. Jim Knowles spent a lot of time with them. Ryan Day spent a lot of time with them. Mark Pantoni spent a lot of time with them. So, um, you know, they got the royal treatment. I think Ohio State is, and I posted this before anyone really wrote about Tackett Curtis in, in my little like quick visit uh, recap um, that I thought that uh, that Ohio State was legit, a, le now a legitimate player in this one. We, you know, they were in the game, they offered, he said nice things, but he saw it, he had an am amazing experience. I'll let the, the dust settle a little bit before I'm ready to call him to Ohio State, see how maybe some of these other visits go, try to connect with him a little bit more um, th than what I have thus far. But, you know, I, 
I do think that Ohio State is one of the top, you know, two, three schools, if not the top school, and they got a great chance to land this kid. All right. And the fourth guy I wanted to ask you about was Bryce West. And and that name sounds familiar. He was another guy who I talked about with Mark a couple weeks ago after the best of the Midwest. He's at 2024, so there's a little more time for him. But Mark just had a great and very detailed update on him at the Buckeye Scoop. But, you know, that's another one where it sounds like the Buckeyes might be feeling pretty encouraged about where they stand with him right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to throw out names of other people around the country. I hate to feel like a homer here and just keep saying, yeah, Ohio State's going to get this kid. They have a great chance, this and that. But with the four kids you mentioned, I, I truly think that they have a great chance. I think they have a really good chance with Tackett Curtis. And he's probably, if I had to stack up the probability of them landing these kids, I would probably say he's fourth out of four. Um, I think Bryce West might be number one on that list of, of likelihood. Uh, again, Cleveland kid. <laughs> Clintonville grew up a Buckeye. I mean, watching the Buckeyes, let's just say that. Um, you know, I, I just think they offered early. It's a long way away. I think he's going to play this thing out a little bit, but I see him ending up at Ohio State as well. So, you know, the last three guys we talked about, and you're saying that you feel pretty good about all of them, the, the last the three of those four guys are all on the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, how much of this is, you know, that a couple of them are in-state guys? How much of it is it the... You know, Jim Knowles, you kind of have the new coach shine right now. I mean, Jim Knowles hasn't given up a yard yet as Ohio State's defensive coordinator. So, you you know, you never look better than you do before you actually have to go out on the field and do anything. But, you know, how much of it is the in-state thing? How much of it is the excitement around the Jim Knowles defense? I mean, what, what do you what do you attribute to the, you know, what seems like a pretty, pretty good run right now for Ohio State? Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's Ohio State. So at the end of the day, no matter what coaches are there or how the team's doing. It's still going to be one of the most attractive places in America for high school football players to go. So, you know, there's going to be ebbs and flows and momentum sometimes, a bunch of flurry of commits, or you just feel momentum building. And then there's going to be times where things are a little bit more quiet. There's probably a variety of reasons for that. Now, I mean, the four kids we just spoke about, I think Tack and Curtis, it's a, it's a simply a Jim Knowles connection, seeing what he could be in that defense um, and just loving the relationship that he's building with that, with that program and everything he saw on his visit. The other three guys, I mean, Arvell Reese and Bryce West, they're Ohio kids. Like you'd almost be asking why isn't an Ohio kid going to Ohio state versus why isn't Ohio kid going to Ohio state, especially from Northeast Ohio at Cleveland Glenville. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And then um, you know, Bryson Rogers, I mean, again, unique circumstance. There's a kid, Alabama offered, Florida offered, Florida State, Miami, like all the in-state programs in Florida offered him. A lot of the regional programs, uh, obviously Alabama, one of the best programs in the country. Uh, he just visited there be before Ohio State. I just think the ties to Ohio, his mom, his family, he kind of grew up rooting for the Buckeyes, watching them. You know, that's his family. That's his that's his home, even though it's not his home. And and so it's a unique circumstance. And so again, the four you asked me about, three of them are virtually like almost Ohio kids. And the other one is just happens to maybe be just a really good personality and and uh skill set fit. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, this is obviously just the beginning of visits for this spring. So I guess give us a couple more names, like maybe prospects who might be folks that people want to keep in mind at least, because you know, there's there are a lot of names to track right now. That's why I keep explaining, you know, reminding you who, when I say this name, you may, you may remember this, this prospect from such previous morning scoops, such as yada, yada, yada. Well, there are obviously a lot of names that people need to keep in mind at this time of year, but, you know, give people just a couple that are either, you know, really big names, you know, highly ranked guys who might be coming soon or guys who might be a little closer to committing or, you know, at least a little bit, you know, more, more, uh, you know, more on commitment watch, even if that's, you know, three months out, four months out, rather than, you know, kind of end of the cycle kind of guys. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone's trying to figure out who's going to be the 2023 quarterback uh, for Ohio State. And on Thursday, March 10th, they have a guy in, in Chris Vizina um, from Alabama visiting. And, you know, you got an Alabama kid, he's got an Alabama offer, got a lot of other offers. Why is he coming up to visit Ohio State? I mean, obviously he sees what Ryan Day is able to do with quarterbacks. Corey Dennis, obviously being a big part of that as well last couple of years. So I think the interest is genuine paying his own dime to come up, see Ohio state, at least hear them out. Um, 
seems like he's pretty excited about the visit from just a few messages I've been able to trade back and forth with him. So, you know, that's that's one I'm going to keep an eye on because everyone's trying to figure out who this 2023 signal caller is going to be. And it seems like he's somewhat willing to leave the leave the uh, the region or leave the state of Alabama. So I think Ohio State definitely got a shot there. Um, also on that day, uh, uh, you know, March 10th is is Malik Hartford safety um, from Cincinnati area. Uh, you know, in-state kid with an offer, uh, definitely taking his time, sifting through the process, but I do think he'll eventually be a Buckeye. And then later this month, uh, AJ Hoffler coming back from Georgia. He was just here in January. He was there in November. Um, third trip on his own dime in a handful of months has openly said Ohio State's the favorite school. I think the only thing that could keep him from Ohio State is either Ohio State not taking him or Larry Johnson hanging it up. Um, so I... He's, he's on commitment watch for me weekend of March 26th. Um, outside of that, I, I just think, you know, some other big names, Jonel Aguero that weekend, Christian Gray, two defensive backs, tight end, Mac Markaway. I think they want to take a second tight end if they can. Um, you know, but, but that big April 1st through 3rd range, you got all those Florida kids coming, the Brandon Innes, the Carnell Tates, the Cormani McLeans, the Damon Fagans. I mean, I don't know what's going to come out of that weekend, but there's a few guys in there that could end up committing to Ohio State, whether they do it now or down the road. At least one of those guys I just mentioned, that's going to happen. So um, definitely stay tuned to that. And then, of course, you know, spring game in, in mid-April is going to be a big visit weekend. It's already shaping up pretty nice. Bryce West, Arvell Reese are, are going to come back for that, as well as, you know, Noah Rogers, wide receiver down from North Carolina. LJ Overton, who, who reclassed the 2022 uh, defensive lineman. I don't think he's going to come to Ohio State, but... Um, you know, he's going to be there for his official visit. So lots and lots to watch coming up. It's going to be exciting to, to, to track it and follow it. Yeah, there is a lot going on right now, and that doesn't even include the on-field stuff going on with the uh, Ohio State football program as spring practice kind of gets rolling. So, yeah, it'll be, there will be a lot to chat about over the next month or so. So, Alex, uh, thank you as always for joining me. Make sure you uh, check out all of Alex's great stuff at BuckeyeScoop.com. As he mentioned, he has been cranking out a bunch of a bunch of ADEC columns. He's had some great content. And of course, he hosts the Around the Oval podcast, which is always uh, always good, fun, fun, insightful shows. Sometimes it's an interview with a recruit. Sometimes it's Tony or Ross Fulton or someone like that from the staff, but always a great conversation. So wherever you find the morning scoop, make sure you also subscribe to Around the Oval and all of our other great podcasts. Tony and I do Buckeye Weekly. Kevin does Big Me Kickoff. Bill and uh, Mark do Gives in the Bank. They're all great shows. You can find them all wherever you find this. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.